Hello, hello, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into medical school and other professional programs. Welcome back to MCAT Bytes, your go-to resource for mastering MCAT materials. In today's episode, we're exploring the intricacies of respiratory physiology, focusing on the vital processes of gas exchange. This process is fundamental for life, enabling the oxygenation of our blood and the removal of carbon dioxide a waste product of metabolism. This is a critical topic for both the chem phys and bio biochem sections of the MCAT, so be sure to take good notes and put them into your Anki cards. Let's start with exploring what gas exchange is. Gas exchange is a biologically significant process occurring in the lungs alveoli. The alveoli, or alveoli, are the tiny little air sacs at the very tips of your lungs. So for an overview of quick lung anatomy, we've got the lung, which is this big old lobe here, and if you were to move all of the fleshy bits, you'd get the trachea, which is going down the middle, the bronchial tubes, which are kind of the wider, thick things coming out the side, and that full, full is further subsidized into bronchioles, which are thinner, and after bronchioles, we finally get our little, little alveoli on the top. And if we expand these, we can see that they're spheres covered in a capillary bed of venules and arterioles. Now back to gas exchange. The efficiency of this exchange is governed by differences in partial pressures, a concept known as Henry's Law. Essentially, gas moves from areas of higher to lower pressure, facilitating the diffusion of oxygen into the blood and carbon dioxide out of it. We'll expand on this more in just a few moments. But first, what is carrying O2 and CO2 to the lungs? Because simple diffusion just wouldn't cut it. So evolution came up with an elliptical red solution. The solution is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is an iron-containing protein in red blood cells. It's critical for transporting both oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and facilitating the return of carbon dioxide, thanks to something called the heme group, which is made up of iron at the center. And then we talked about partial pressure. Well, what is that? It's represents the pressure exerted by a single type of gas in a mixture of gases. It's the driving force behind gas diffusion. So think about this. When you take a big inhale, I just filled it in with oxygen and nitrogen from the air and very little carbon dioxide. But inside of my lungs already, or surrounding it, I should say, in the capillaries, my muscles have been working hard and produced CO2 as a waste product. So there's more CO2 inside of me than outside of me. Therefore, thanks to partial pressures, that CO2 is going to want to go from my blood into my lungs, ultimately exhaled into the environment. And finally, Henry's Law. This highlights the direct relationship between the concentration of gas in a liquid and its partial pressure, explaining how gases dissolve in blood. And if you want to grab a screenshot for your Anki cards, I recommend doing that now. Next up, we've got mechanisms of gas exchange. The journey of oxygen from alveoli to blood and carbon dioxide is the opposite direction. The journey of oxygen from alveoli to blood and carbon dioxide in the opposite direction is facilitated by the alveolar and capillaries walls, thin, permeable nature. The vast surface area of the alveoli ensures an efficient exchange. Oxygen binds with hemoglobin in red blood cells, turning the blood bright red, indicating oxygenation. This oxygen-rich blood travels back to the heart, ready to be circulated into the rest of the body. The body meticulously regulates the diameter of bronchioles and blood vessels to optimize gas exchange. Elevated CO2 levels in the alveoli cause bronchioles to dilate, enhancing the expulsion of carbon dioxide. Conversely, when oxygen levels in the blood are low, pulmonary arterioles dilate, increasing blood flow and oxygen delivery. Now, there are two types of respiration you need to understand for the MCAT. We've got external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration is the gas exchange between the alveoli and blood in the lung. This is what we've been talking about the whole time. We are bringing in oxygen and getting rid of CO2. But there's another type of respiration you need to know, which is internal respiration. This is occurring at the cellular level, where tissue in tissues where oxygen is released from the blood into the cells. And at the same time, those cells are working hard, so they're going to get rid of some CO2 and put that into the blood. So be careful when you hear someone talking about respiration. Are we talking about external breathing respiration or internal cellular respiration? Let's end with a practice problem. How might this condition impact the efficiency of gas exchange? Take a few moments, think about this, tell a friend, tell yourself. My answer to this would be, well, lower hemoglobin levels mean less oxygen can be transported in the blood. This will lead to a possible oxygen deficiency in both the organs and the tissues. Today, we've navigated the complexity of gas exchange 
a cornerstone of respiratory physiology. By understanding these principles, you've become better equipped to tackle a ton of MCAT questions and appreciate the marvels of human physiology. Both are pretty equally important, I think. Thank you so much for watching our video on respiratory physiology, and I will see you next time.